Good afternoon. So I have just 10 minutes with you today, so I'd like to start by asking you all a question. How many of you have tried to learn a new language before? Show of hands. Oh, it's almost all of you. How many of you have succeeded? Uh, not many. Okay. <laughs> I know the feeling. Well, whether you've succeeded in learning a new language or you're still trying, you are not alone. Okay, there are approximately 1.2 billion people learning a new language around the world. Now, the vast majority of them are learning just one language in particular, a language spoken by everyone in this room. That's right, at least 800 million people are learning how to speak English. And many of them are doing it to get out of poverty. The reason for this is simple. In most countries, you can earn between 25 and 100% more just by knowing English. But what about the other 400 million people? Why are they learning a new language? Well, I ask these questions because I am part of a team that is trying to make language education free for everyone in the world. It's called Duolingo, and we have more than 300 million people using this app to learn a new language 100% free. And we have studied, we are, well, we have one of the largest data sets of language learners in existence because of this, and we have studied millions of people spanning every single country on the planet. Our researchers created this map, and it shows us the most popular languages to learn in each country around the world. And it tells us a lot of interesting things. For example, we can see just how popular it is to learn English. Right? Most of the world is learning English. This is something that we expected. But then we noticed something unexpected, something strange. If I zoom in here, you'll be able to see it too. Yeah. That's right. The data told us that the most popular language to learn in Sweden is Swedish. <laughs> Sounds like a mistake, doesn't it? Can't be that hard to learn, can it? So why was this? Why was the most popular language to learn in Sweden Swedish? Refugees, right. Sweden saw more than a 10x increase in the number of refugees seeking asylum there between 2015 and 2016. And as they arrived, they all began looking for a way to learn Swedish for free. But where did all of these refugees come from? Many of them came from Syria. As a matter of fact, there are now more registered Syrian refugees than the entire population of Los Angeles. There are more than six million registered Syrian refugees. Now, charts like this are shocking, of course, but I think they're so shocking to people like us because we're just not used to looking at charts like this, are we? We're used to looking at charts like this. <laughs> Same up into the right trajectory, completely different meaning, completely different thing that we're focusing on. I'll give an example. The UN actually came out with a study not so long ago that showed that more people have access to mobile phones than toilets. Hmm. That says something about our priorities, doesn't it? <laughs> when I first heard about this, I wasn't sure whether to be impressed or ashamed. But then I was reminded that over the years, we have actually received thousands of letters and emails from people who are using technology, mobile phones, to get themselves out of difficult situations and change their lives for the better. Here's one of them, I'll read it to you. It says, learning German was a necessity for me to advance in my career and broaden my options beyond Syria. Living in a country torn by a hideous war and daily terrible news can be unbearable, but Duolingo always found its ways to lift up my spirit. We've received many letters just like this one. And when we discovered what was going on over in Sweden, we decided that simply Replying to these letters and publishing our research was not enough. So we decided to go further. Much further, actually, about 6,000 miles further, to be exact. And we traveled from the United States to the Middle East to find and meet the people that had been writing to us. So our journey begins here in Gaziantep, just over the border with Syria. Some photos from the journey. It's a favorite of mine. <laughs> so the first person to let us into his home and into his life is a man named Ale. Now, he actually protested against the Syrian government when things started to go bad there. 
and he was arrested during one of these protests and dragged off to jail. But as he explained to us, this was no ordinary jail. Now, he said that he was placed in a small cell with 50 other men, so small and so crowded that they all had to sit balled up with their knees to their chests, unable to stand up and unable to speak for one whole year. And he said that he did not get to see the sky for one year. He described it as being under the ground in a grave. Now, after he was released, he fled to Turkey, which is where his story takes more of a positive turn, thankfully. And the first thing he did was use his mobile phone to begin teaching himself Turkish using free resources like ours. He now speaks such good Turkish that he has become a school teacher teaching Arabic language from Turkish and computer programming to the kids in Turkey, helping to make their lives better. He's doing much better himself, as you can see. I have time for just one more story for you today, and it comes from the final stop on our journey. We were granted last minute permission to enter this place. This is Azraq refugee camp in Jordan, and it is one of the largest refugee camps in the world. The Azraq refugee camp has a population of 37,000 refugees. And out of 37,000 refugees, 60% of them are children. And they introduced us to this young man who lives in the camp. This is Mahmoud. Mahmoud is 15 years old, and he has been at Azraq since he was a child. See, when his family fled Syria, they had to move between more than 30 different towns before they arrived at this refugee camp. They moved 30 times before they found somewhere safe. Now, we were introduced to Mahmoud because he is just completely obsessed with technology and education. Completely obsessed. Very charming. And he, <laughs> we asked him what he would say if he could send a message about himself to everyone in the United States, which is a risky question. To be honest, it's a risky question to ask anybody, perhaps even some of you, but he did a great job. He said this. He said, I want them to know about me that I never gave up with the war circumstances that we are in. He said, I love to learn so that life would continue. That's how he thinks about his education. That's how he thinks about what technology makes possible. Now, we met many countless people on this journey. And as they led us into their homes and their lives, slowly but surely, those data points became real people. And those charts I showed you became faces. And they all seemed to have just one thing in common. They were not learning a new language to earn 25% more or to get a better job. They were learning a new language to survive. See, for them, Learning a new language represented a chance at a new life. It was a chance for them to find home again. So all of this left us with just one final question. What do we do about all of this? What do we do with everything we've discovered? We decided to turn the footage from our journey into a documentary for the whole world to see. The documentary is called Something Like Home, and we released it for free on World Refugee Day 2018. It's since been watched by more than one million people around the world, and it promotes the United Nations Refugee Council petition. This is a petition that asks the governments of the world to make sure that all of the refugees in their country get access to a free education. So as we go forward, we're building our product, not just for the 300 million people that we're proud to serve, but for all 1.2 billion people learning a new language and for all of the reasons that they're doing it. We think we can make a positive impact in their lives. And the same thing actually goes for every single one of you. Because whether we like it or not, in today's highly connected world, the stories you all tell are going to have an impact far beyond what we could ever imagine. And while you won't always get to decide who gets impacted, those stories. 
you do get to decide how they are impacted by those stories and what stories you choose to tell as a result. That's all we have time for today. Thank you.